Nashville. Who do you want to bet? Who? To- Tokyo Giants? All right. Uh, give me that account number. I'll, I'll put that bet in for you. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were on the air. I didn't realize you spoke Japanese. Konnichiwa. Oh, nice. Congratulations. I know. That was your that was your big intro. That was your big dig. I had to get I had to I'm sorry. I didn't realize we were on the air when, when he called. Oh, nice. Tokyo Very Dragons. Nice. Tokyo nice. Dragons. Playing 155,000 yen. That's that's not that much. I think it's only like 1500 bucks. 155,000 yen is a dollar 55 to 1. 1500 oh. 50, 1550 yen hmm. is a dollar 55 to 1. Weird. Yeah. I think a dollar 50. Good favorite, strong favorite. Favorite. Hmm. What's happening? Not a whole lot. Not much going on in the world. Is there? Well, they crashed into a bridge. Um the, the guy's a criminal. Puff Puff Daddy's now the diddler. He's he's escaped America. I believe that. Did he skip town? Yeah, he's gone. Oh, I didn't know that. There you yeah, you go. Did, Diddler's gone. Yeah. Pete yeah. Pete Rhodes was one inter- interpreter away from a Hall of Fame. Yep. Otani with the allegations. The allegations. Oh no. Un- I didn't, I didn't know five million dollars came out of my account because I have so much money, I wouldn't look at that account. Yeah, that's the same Ever. as like five bucks coming out of the account for you. So you wouldn't what? notice that either. Ever. <sighs> hey. Yeah. But the important thing is, well, one, baseball's already started. But two, well, how, baseball is actually started. Games well. counted? They counted in league for league games? Yeah, in Korea. The split, yeah. the split with the Padres was a league. I kept looking for standings. They keep showing me the Cactus League or the Grapefruit League. Yeah, because it hasn't really standed. Like, okay. hasn't really well, started, Thursday we started. got uh, opening day, right? The real opening day is Thursday? The real opening day is tomorrow. That's it. I wonder yep. what time the Yankee game is on. They're playing the Astros. Know. I don't know what time they play, but I can tell you when their season their season will be finished. Astros, yeah, you know they're bitching about. I'm sorry, they're complaining about the Yankee pitching staff. Meanwhile, I looked at how many guys on the Astros are out. Mm-hmm. McCullough, uh, Eureka, Eureka, whatever the hell his name is. Uh, Ur- Uruka, yeah, yeah, him, Verlander. Yeah, it's a tough one. I know. Staying, and rub, staying healthy and is Rubbermaid pulled their sponsorship. <laughs> uh, that's too bad. They have no chance now without a corporate sponsor, such as no, Rubbermaid. Rubbermaid. Yeah, maybe oh, man. Get... Whatever. <laughs> I don't. I don't like your odds for the Yankees, Phil. I really don't. I don't need this. I got to lower my phone. Well, you don't have to like them. You're not the one that's playing on them or rooting for them either. Mm-hmm. I just think that. Your your season's over before it even starts. I think you have no chance. I got news for you. One flip of the FBI switch and your season's over. That's not true. We already got a great team without them. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's why we spent all that money to get them. Yeah, here we go. Another fan rationalization. By the way, yeah, I have a bone, way. bone to pick with you. With me? What did I yeah, do now? Did. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what you did. I had a podcast last week with Craig Spencer about product. So what? And you jumped in and complained I was, that the lamp is proprietary to perception versus reality. Now, absolutely. here's my question to you. What okay. right do you have on that lamp? Because you told me you did not send it. Therefore, you have no... The proprietary is our conversation relating. And as per to the movie, The Christmas Story. The lamp has nothing to do... With this podcast. Oh, I'm sorry. Where did it's the you background? It's the background. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Where did you pass the bar? What state did you pass the bar in? The, st- the state yeah, exactly. of exactly. Uh, the state of confusion to, is where you I got your to, bar. Brook, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Law Academy. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who is your professor? Um, I forgot Doctor the name. Doctor Doolittle. No, no, no. <laughs> Judge um <laughs> Judge Haller. <laughs> Judge Judy, Judge Haller. Mm. Anyhow, today we got a good show. Allegedly, allegedly we got um, and we have the wheel. Show them the wheel. We had, we made a change to the wheel. Oh man, yeah. a change to the we, wheel. What do we took do? Off, we took off the three ball arsenal and added the t shirt. 
that's not true but we did add a shirt there you know i uh i did it last minute because i forgot to make a nice <laughs> printed spent, one so spent shirt wrong but whatever um who are the chefs <laughs> <laughs> who are the chefs <clears throat> so here's the rules nick's gonna put up a link hold on i haven't put want. it up yet no you're going to i said going to put up a link mm -hmm. And it's it's a um, a link you you sign in on, and and uh, if you get selected at the end of the show, we'll spin the wheel, and whatever prize comes up, you get. Unless you're still in the show and you have ninety seconds once your name is drawn, you can um, say I, I want that or don't want it. For instance, you could have won a pair of shoes, and said no, I don't need a pair of shoes. Spin it again, and and you could get a grip sack. Hmm. I mean, that's hypothetical. a good deal. I don't know why, but I can't copy and paste right now. Can you believe that? I'm going to have to figure it out. Give me a minute. And, and by the way, a couple of minutes ago, Nick was not on the on the Internet. One job to do. An IT guy. And he's not on the Internet. If it happens okay. again, if it happens right. again, the show's going on. I needed. See, that's the problem. I needed two hands. You know, that, there's an advantage in everything. Two hands. Two -handed. So the link's up there. Let's do a fake spin. Fake spin? Test yeah. spin? All right. Test what do we hope? I'm going to guess shirt because I think everything's just going to be gravitating towards the shirt now. I'm going chamois again. Okay. I like the chamois. Let's see what it lands on. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh it almost shamatized. Grip sack. Almost see? Got to, almost I got almost got shamatized. So, yeah. So, Anyway, so it's going to be it's, it's going to be a perception versus reality shirt. I'm going to put that out there as well. So That's that right. shirt is the shirt you win for all the fans of the show. Yeah. That's what and we're since we have a limited run, they're only available in small and extra small. That's not <laughs> true at all. They're all made to order. So we'll get your information just like normal and we'll ask for a shirt size if that's what you end up. See, and the real kicker is going to be if someone lands on a shirt to start. Yeah, we're gonna have to Man. boo. Oh, we're gonna have to boo yeah, yeah, if they yeah. if they want to spin again. We're gonna have to say, "How could you? could you?" That's right. You could have the, the perception the, versus reality shirt. The audacity um, that you would want to trade in a shirt from yeah. your favorite podcast, America's ninth ranked perception <laughs> versus reality, on Wednesdays at three p.m. Eastern. <clears throat> the tenth ranked, tenth after last week, we moved up to tenth ranked. Nielsen bowling Raider. podcast on Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock central time. And who does these ratings? How do you get to number one? Do you just, you just claim it? It's the rating guys. Do Is it? it? Yeah. The rating guys, a bunch of guys that they, that's their name. Rating guys. Um, what are we going to talk about today? Let's see. We're going to talk about ball maintenance. We are going to talk about ball maintenance and we got a mystery um, topic today. Mystery topic. Um, should I tell them what the mystery topic is? No, no, no let's keep wait. them in suspense. No, in fact, not even tell them what the topic is. Just start talking about just it. Just start talking about it. <laughs> yeah, right. So I got I got something real quick. Okay. Because <clears throat> you know I'm a stati statistician type guy. Okay, sure. In the Masters, the USBC oh, no. Masters. This is ongoing, not a mystery topic, by the way. No, it's ongoing right now. Yes. <laughs> in the top 63 bowlers right now. After one squad today, yeah, this, is the, last, this is the last day, yeah. right? There's one lefty in the top 63, and here's the bad part. He's done bowling, and he's in 60th. There is a very good chance. <sighs> Can you imagine that? How big is the field again? Was it like 300? I, don't 400, know. I think it's 400 bowlers. Yeah, and not a single... Lefty may get not into a single the top lefty. 64. That's exactly right. I'm gonna look at. Uh, I'm not gonna look. It'll take me too long. I have no idea what I'm doing. This could be another Harry Potter movie. Harry Potter and the audacity of the USBC. Uh, I'm we should make that you. a shirt. I am flabbergasted. You are I'm vexed. Flabbergasted. I'm vexed. I'm flabbergasted. You, the lefties. This. The lefties have been cuckolded once again. I can't believe it. I mean, how do you have a tournament with 400 bowlers about? I don't know if that's the right number. Sound good. It's it's, it's way up there. It's well over 200. Mm -hmm. 
and there's not one lefty in the top 63. Well, there is right now. He's 60, he's 60 it with two squads to go. It's a good chance he's not gonna hang on. Matt Ballard says, you know what they call a tournament with no lefties? A yeah, good one. A good one, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's amazing. Inconceivable. That's another one we didn't say. We Inconceivable. Had to go princess, we had to go Princess Bride on him. Inconceivable. Four hundred and sixty-five so anyway. total on the roster, and not a single lefty may get into the show. Or not even the show, just the, show, the match the show. play. Top 63. Mm. That's that is 63 is match play. Yeah, because the winner from last year is the 64th guy. Yeah, Simo is right. automatically in. So yeah, he, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know where he was at. I haven't really looked at the numbers, but I don't know if he bowled today. If he bowled the qualifier. I don't know. I mean, it's such an inconvenience for him to bowl. He lives in Vegas. <laughs> I mean, it's wear and tear. Go to league. Well, you don't have to bowl every game. You bowl five, you leave, you don't come back the next day. Go to the snack bar, get a hot dog. Snack bar. Let's all go to the snack, snack bar. bar. Let's all go to this. Snack so anyhow, um, that was mind-boggling when I looked at that. It'll be very interesting to see what happens. I know. At the end of today, when the numbers are all in, and we'll see, and maybe you never know, they might press a little different button come match play. Yeah, and all of a sudden, that lone lefty is now unbeatable. Well, that's exactly what could happen. And then they'll say, Look how easy the left was. Where were you guys? Yeah. It was yeah. just uh, all about the breakdown. That's what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We just gave them, uh, you know, dry boards. So that movie's three. probably going to be on, right? That movie's going to movie? be on this weekend. What movie? Ten Commandments. Yeah. yeah. How's your Messiah now? How do you how do you cast Edward G. Robinson, one of the biggest gangster guys in the fifties and sixties, in a role, an Egyptian role, and I, I don't remember exactly what role he played. He was something in town in the Egyptian. <sighs> Yeah, how's your Messiah? Hmm. Didn't didn't they do that with uh, what's the name? Not Gene Autry, but uh, who's the other spaghetti western star? The uh, Clint Eastwood. No, before that, the big one, Hopalong Cassidy. No, the good, White the bad, Earth. and the ugly. Who was that? Good, bad, and the ugly. Clint Eastwood. No, before that, sorry. Uh, who was uh, gonna paint your wagon? I have no idea. <laughs> Somebody what help me him? out, please, in the chat. <laughs> what did I do with him? What was it? He's the most iconic Western film star ever. Clint, Clint Eastwood. No. Most like no. John Wayne. John Wayne. Thank you. Finally. What they, what, I, I mentioned something that's in your wheelhouse. He's pretty much the same age as you. Oh, and boy. you just whiffed it. His name is Marion, by the way. <sighs> Marion Wayne. Yeah. Well, so anyway, um, so what 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 role did he play that was as bad as being cast as a he, Egyptian peddler? Uh, somebody else will be able to help me out as well. But so yeah. you bring up a topic you don't know anything about. Yes, exactly right. Because I got the chat there to help me out. But he was uh, an Egyptian, or he was somewhere in the desert, and it was not in the U.S. I mean, it was probably filmed in the United States, but. I don't know. I don't watch those movies. I just know that they just took the biggest film star, Genghis Khan. There you go. Ready? Genghis Khan. He's, he was in Genghis He got Khan. cast as Genghis Khan. Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. How do you not know that? Because it's not a Western. I mean, life anyway, mattered. Let's you talk probably about, were still living in Brooklyn. Probably was. Let's talk about, let's talk about the mystery topic today. You want to talk about the mystery topic first? What do you want to talk about first? Go ahead. Go for the mystery topic. No, no, we don't have to. Do, you want to do the other part first? No, yeah. I'll do the mystery topic because it'll be shorter and then we can go to a top five, which is not a top five this week. Because I did the top five this it's week. It's a top seven. He didn't He didn't grasp the concept of top five. He's just like, how about seven? <laughs> I like, was going to just say, here's my top five and then have seven items in it. But I figured yeah. I might as well, you know. So, so I called up Bobby Bruss, my buddy Bobby. This is the uh, mystery who, topic. Who the runs way. the um, Brunswick booth that has all the brands in it. And yeah. I asked him about how the Nationals are playing. Right. Um, ironically enough, my buddies are down here bowling now, Jeff and Seth and, and Brent. And I sent them a text and said, because they already bowled team yesterday and they bowled doubles already. I said, you guys should tune in because I'm going to tell you how to play the lanes. 
this week. <laughs> yeah. I could have called Bobby last week and helped him out, but I didn't. Um, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to run through this and then Nick and I are going to put together what we would take as an arsenal. Yep. And I've Based already jotted on, down my I list. Done, I have not done that. Okay. You're just going to wing it. I know it's well, going to be how, Intel. That's Intel, what Intel. happens. That's what happens before I get on the plane. I go, what's in this bag? I'll take that. Uh, yeah, that's um, fine. Exactly. So here's what I was told for team. First of all, they're tough. Um, they're tough and you can't give up the pocket. Okay. So keep that in mind. You got to keep the ball in front of you. You can't give up the pocket. In team, you need to use smooth, readable balls. Um, so you need to get the ball to seven, eight down lane. So how far out the suck, second set of tracers is that? Two boards to the right or two boards to the left? How far are they? No, I mean, how far left or right of the tracer is that? The first set uh, of tracers. Three three boards, two to three boards, because it's on yeah. 10 and 15, the tracers. Okay, so you got to get it just to the right or to the left of the tracer. Which is um, it? Well, if you're left-handed, <laughs> it's to the left. If you get it to the left of the tracer and you're right-handed, you got a problem. Yeah, did not you specify know. that. You have to get it to the yeah. right and the left. Left of yeah, the tracer. Yeah. Like, I don't if know how you do that, but good luck. No, you could do it. So you got to get it to the left if you're a left hand. The scores are bad. The right, exactly what the scores are bad. Or to the right of the tracers down lane. Um, most people that are successful are standing, you know, playing around 14, 15 out to about eight, nine at the arrows. And a so side note, a, slight, a lot of the people that are very successful out there are actually very good bowlers and they practice a lot. Yes. I, I got to write that down. Yeah, you practice a lot. Maybe get like that. three, get three games in before you go or something like just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and the team pattern is playing shorter. Bobby said, I don't know that for sure if it is shorter, but he says it's playing very like it's shorter. And if it isn't and he's wrong, he's about to quit his business because he's that sure it's pretty short. Um, so I said, well, you know, what's, what should people do? You know, he said, well, Surface, use surface to tone it down, make it controllable. Short pin or low flare layouts. Okay. Until they break down. And then once they break down is when you'll start to lose carry because you got to chase it in. It's and, getting and quick. He, yeah, but he said like a lot of cases, somebody go 230, 240, 190. Mm -hmm. You know, 230, 40, 20. You know, instead of having a monster block, yeah, when it goes, it goes. Yeah, because they're stubborn. You want to, you know, if you yeah. bowl good first game well, or two, it's hard to make like a big move. Well, it's, and it's it. not that you're missing the pocket either. Oh, you know what I mean? You're going, you wrap, 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 and next thing you know, you, you know, you throw a double and you shoot 190. Or you so, miss a couple of those. Yeah, or you throw a split in the middle and you throw a double, you know, hit 190. So it's not that you suddenly can't hit the pocket anymore. You can't carry. Hmm. So he said that they jump in um with with a bigger ball now that, bigger. i'm not saying you go to a bigger like a size wise like get to a no, beach ball they don't allow that at the usbc pba would allow that maybe as long it was as long as it was over 78 it, it could be any size just can't be 78 hardness under 78 yeah hardness. Yeah. yeah the only yeah. downside is having to like go back and get your bowling ball out of the back every single time because the ball return wouldn't pick it up Exactly, and it could screw up the rest of the tournament. But anyway, but, um, <clears throat> so so the shorter pattern, balls you can read easily, um, short you know short pin, low flare balls, you know, um, and I'll go through a list of them. <clears throat> Excuse me, urethane plays on both the, the team and the singles and doubles. Yes, you're happy with that. Well, once you <laughs> see what my top six balls are that I'm bringing uh, at this very are. moment, yeah. and you talk about me with my intel's. Look who's talking. Um, the difference is I'm actually good with my urethanes, whereas you're... If I recall last year, I threw urethane in the singles, and you threw urethane in the singles, and I outscored you. I didn't throw urethane in the singles. Well, maybe you should have. Maybe you should have. Yeah. Um, hybrids work. He said hybrids would surface. Okay. So he said uh, the theorem and the outer limits were doing well. with nice. people. Like, that's the ball he put people in if they came into the, start, the shop depending on the type of game they had. Um, and, and the hybrids were okay as the ball to jump in with. You know, so if you needed, um, if you use a low flare ball and, and suddenly you're thinking 
my carry's starting to go away. You go to a big, a bigger ball like the Theorem or the Outer Limits, and you can uh, put a little surface on it, and you will find. Surface is good, yeah. I never usually use anything mm -hmm. shiny there because mm -hmm. I can adjust ball speed and loft pretty easy. And my right. issues have always been if it doesn't hook, if I can't get the ball yeah. to slow down, right? that's when I have issue there, not the yeah. other way around. I never yeah. usually have. I mean, last year they hooked a lot in doubles and singles. I know they did. I know. They hooked a yeah. lot. So Yeah, yeah. He said that the, using 1,500 with a light compound. Light compound, okay. Light, light compound, 1,500 light compound. Hmm. That takes care of that part of the page. Okay, so um, <laughs> then I asked him about singles and doubles. Yeah. And um, singles and doubles are tighter. As they usually are, to start. No, the other way around. To normally start. Team, the team is, I'm saying, but normally the team is um, tighter than singles and doubles. Singles and doubles hooks more. In this case, it's backwards. The team is more hook than the uh, singles and doubles. Well, historically, the team pattern's been shorter. So yeah, I know. When I mean, saying, like, yeah. I can't start out at five board like I do team, right? You know. Oh, so you're talking about singles and doubles has been shorter. Yes. No, other oh, way team around. Team has been shorter. Yeah. Team has oh, been yeah, shorter. Yeah, I yeah, play okay. further okay. out to start. Right. So right now he's saying that the um, singles and doubles are a little. Um, <clears throat> there's there's more must be more oil a little tighter. Um, he said that balls that have been working is the hitter, the GB4, breakaway sanded. What are, you, what are you doing over there? Somebody said that the stuff's not working on Facebook, so I'm just checking it. Keep talking. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, he drew some black conspiracies. They worked for singles and doubles. The zigzag would surface, and that makes sense to me. Because the zigzag um, has a lower intermediate diff and a lower total diff. Uh, and the GB5. Those are the balls that he said seem to be working with a little surface on them. Pin down ASIMs work on that. So that's interesting. Uh, and the stronger drilled symmetrical is when you have to jump in. And it's the same scenario. You got to play it, keep it in front of you. Um, you know, six around six to nine in that area, piping it a little. Uh, and then once it starts to hook, you got to jump in with a bigger ball. And, you know, the case he's made was a stronger uh, symmetrical ball would be good. Um, yeah. Looked like a know, lot of the guys that were having success in there were throwing it harder and keeping it straighter. There were some guys well, that were hooking it, but a lot right. of ball speed to keep it online inside that track. Right. Now, if you don't have a lot of ball speed, you're going to have to be able to manipulate the balls you have to keep yeah, it sure. in front of you longer, you know. Um, and he said, you know what, it, it just, you can't give up the pocket. You gotta, you gotta, you know, if you throw it away from the pocket, you're, you're going to be in trouble a little bit. Okay. You know, even when they open up the angles, they still keep it that seven, eight, uh, eight, nine down lane. And they just have to feed to it. You know, you can't like boom it and then get it to there. It's gotta be a shove it up the lane type thing. Well, I'm going to shove it. Right well, apparently the they did to the lefties up over at the. Oh, I'm sorry, I brought that up already, didn't they? How they shoved it to the lefties. <laughs> they shoved it right up the lefties. So let's talk about your your selection of balls to bring. Yeah, and I wrote this before I heard Bobby Bruss' report from Nationals. Okay. Right. So as it sits right now, and mind you, I don't bowl till June. You don't bowl till June either, right? Correct. So there's going to be some more ball launches and more options that I'll take a look at. But if I were leaving tomorrow, if I were leaving tomorrow, if and only if I was right. leaving tomorrow, my first ball that's coming with me right. would be purple hammer, green pin with 360 grit on it. 360? 360. Why don't you just go in the yard, get a rock, glue it to a piece of paper, and that will be a one grit. I might try that too if it doesn't hook enough. God, how did it not hook? See, here's the thing. Like, the more surface I use, the better for everybody else. Apparently. Thank God I'm not on your pair. Some guys didn't even want to show up on your team last year. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't. Go ahead. I was so like, what did I what did I grit. Purple hammer green. with the green pin. Purple hammer, green pin. Which one is that now? That's a, a, a ebonite ball. 
No, no. Oh, our, our first ones we made here were green pin, and then we switched to the purple pin, which is so the next ball I'm bringing. And that one's not PBA legal, right? None of them are PBA legal. <laughs> but, hey, they're but, still legal. But, but you're using it at the USBC National Tournament, their biggest tournament of the year. And you could use it at the Masters, too, by the way. Um, yeah. yeah, but you can't use it on a PBA. I got it. Okay, it must still be softer legal. on the PBA and harder when you throw it in league and at yeah they must they okay. must not get softer and they, might they not, only get might softer not. on pba patterns right and they only I get soft on pba durometers too but durometers. hey okay. Green it's pins. measuring it's measuring oil and contaminants it's not measuring the ball but That's hey go ahead. Anyway, go ahead so yeah the, uh, purple hammer with the purple pin box surface well now so, which one is that now that's the resin purple hammer no purple pin so the difference between is about a point of hardness. So the first ones we made were at 73, and then we bumped up to 74 on the purple. And what's that going to be sanded with? Box surface, about 1,000 grit. Okay. And then right. I will take my black hammer urethane. <laughs> Just in case I burn them up so much with the purples that I need to stay in the same spot. Okay. And go to one that will give me... And that one's going to be box surface. It comes out of the box 500, but I'm going to just let it lane shine because I will use that primarily for spares, and uh, I will use that primarily if they get broken down and I want to stay straight. Got it. Because okay. moving in with urethane is not an option. No. So plan B, if I need to get out of urethane, would be how scorpion. Many, how many balls are you bringing? Six. I always bring six. Wow. Scorpion low flare would be my um, first ball out of the bag, getting out of urethane, something that's I wrote that smooth. down, too. That was one of the balls you said. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's a hybrid. It's a, hybrid. It's a low flare. It's a uh, perfect ball right in his wheelhouse. Per that's yeah. exactly last, right. Last year yeah. was dark, dark web hybrid, I believe, and this year is going to be scorpion low flare. Okay. Um, something I can play straighter with, something that has a little bit more pop that I can move in and bank off of the dry. Okay. Um, that'll be the first ball I use. And then when that one gets a little lazy, I have um, from there, I'll have a, a theorem, track theorem, with a little bit of surface on it. Yep. Another hybrid ball with surface, as Bobby said. Yep. Not not crazy yeah. flaring or anything like that. Right. Uh, but with a touch of surface, that way I can kind of start wheeling the lane a little bit, get left and yep. cheat it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see what happens. But my last ball is going to be the hammer effect. And that's going to be my well, big ball, right? That's a big ball. That's a big flip ball. So if I need something that's going to really get to the front and come off that spot really hard, the hammer right. effect is going to be the one to go. Hmm. What about you? Well, I, on the other hand, I'm going to bring a hitter pin down. A nice symmetrical ball. That. Yeah, pin down, right? I'm going to bring a short pin breakaway. Okay. I'm going to play with the surface on that. I might put like 2,000 on it or or uh, 3,000. Mm -hmm. It'll still slow it down enough for me, right? Uh, an Intel solid. Of course. How many? Just one. Just one. I'm only, I only bring five balls. As a matter of fact, I only bring three. I ship two. Oh, you ship two and you bring a three-ball bag? Yeah, and then I borrow a bag from the booth, a two-ball bag from the booth, hmm. and that's it. And then a spare ball, bring my spy. Yeah. Because when the lanes are dry. Got to grab the spy. spy. <laughs> that's the one I drilled for you. That, I, I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I missed. <laughs> missed. And then I, I, have a, I have a ball coming out in, in the Juno, Juno area. That I'm going to take. Okay. I mean, you can't talk about it. You can't even can't like. Right yeah. That's good. I mean, I mean, the more we talk about something like that, you might blurt it out just the name like you I did. Might, with... but just think about what what's playing out there and what I didn't say I was bringing. So right. that's the piece we're going to have. I mean, I already know what it is. I know and everybody don't... else. Everybody else knows what it is. Can anybody guess what ball he's talking about? Hmm. Snack attack, snack attack, baby. No, it's Let's not the go. McPhilly C with the snack attack coming out it's in June. It's not a snack attack. <laughs> it's not the snack attack. 
Oh man. And then I'm gonna pack some talent. But you gotta have <laughs> you gotta pack talent. Yeah, where are you getting that from all of a sudden? Buy it. Buy it I, on I eBay. Connect- you, gotta, you gotta you bid on eBay. I got a connection in Japan. Um, oh nice. Yeah, nice. Anyway, um and then I'll play with the surfaces before I go. I'm gonna practice on the pattern a couple of times. The alleged pattern. Well, or here's you, what they you think. Practice last pattern, last year's. No, no. I think here's what I would what what was surmised that this year's team pattern is equivalent to the 2019 and the 2022 singles and doubles pattern. And how would they know that since they don't have the numbers of the new pattern? Just I don't going know. Of- I'm just telling you what was surmised that that's how it played. Hmm. You know. So what, how, how, let me ask you a question. How far off could it be? It's going to be tricky. Yeah, maybe. I mean, so what, what's the worst thing that could happen to me is they hook more. That is the worst thing that can happen. So you should probably shine up all your stuff. Not, In fact, you should, you should just take not, all spies. I spied out. Not the yeah. case. I'm not Spy. shining up anything. I'm going to, I put 5,000 on my Intel solid. Yeah. It was pretty cool because I was able to stand left for the first time in quite a while. Um, and I'm going to go play with the surface on the hitter. And I'm going to definitely play with the surface on the short pin breakout breakaway. Don't forget to change all your pitches before you go too. no, I'm not doing that. I'm, I, I tried to ask you a question about it and you mocked me. So now, <laughs> now we're not going to discuss it. So that's I it. mock you. I mock you on every question. I know you do, but that's not uh-huh. it. How many so let's talk about the spy first. No, let's talk about the spy first. For those that don't know, I go up to Muskegon a couple of times a year, and I always go in the winter time, and they graciously invite me to sub at the House of Pain. Yeah. And last year, not this year, last year I went, and um, Nick said, "Drill a spy. You need a spy." And I said, "Now nah, I'm going to drill a new Rattler." Rattler. Uh, big mistake on my part. I should have listened to the homie. And when at what point snake. did you realize it was a mistake? Was it the first shot when you went three no, off the right, was, or the second shot you went three off the right? It was a third shot because <laughs> I moved eight, I moved three more, and then I moved again, and it was not so I had moved a total of about 14 boards, and um, it was not enough. So, anyhow, mm-hmm. so this year I go get the spy, and Nick gets it out of the warehouse and lays it out, and we agree on it, and I go do something, I come back. And there are the scribe lines, and the holes are nowhere near <laughs> the scribe lines. Yeah. Not, I'm talking about like not even in the yeah. same area code. The scribe yeah. lines are here, and my yeah. holes are like over here. Right. And right. he goes, yeah. I missed. You didn't yeah. miss. <laughs> that wasn't just a, a miss. is like, you know what? I went I a 30 like second the- long on your ring finger. That's a no. miss. No. This was not a miss. Yeah, I, I totally, I totally whiff. But I, I, I was looking at the scribe lines, and I said, you know what? With the finger Maybe. method layout, I don't think it's going to look very good. So I'm just going to shift it on over. I got Liar. your spans perfect, but I Liar. mean, we just Liar. changed the layout on you. And yeah, because great. I laid out the ball with the spans. I'm the one who scribed the spans. After I didn't you use the, the thumb. I didn't use the, the wrong scri- spot. I didn't use the scribe lines. So I didn't do that. Your, your lines were irrelevant, sir. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. So that's that's my experience with Nick laying out a ball for me. So hey, I'm only used to drilling balls get... for myself lately. I haven't Apparently. been in a pro shop for 15 oh, years. Oh man, I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm gonna find somebody else. A little here. rusty. Hey, anybody who's who's ever drilled a ball has messed up at least one. But hey, you still were able to use it. One and two, you probably broke 500 barely. I bought pretty good. I, I won money oh, with oh, it. Yeah, he, I could have yeah, won he, more money if it was uh, drilled properly. Yeah, you won seven dollars. You could have won like eight. No, I won, I won way more than that because that last card game is expensive. I won oh, thirty-seven dollars that night. Yeah, they play they play big money over there on that. I like that. I'm on. Like, I'm glad like I'm on that. the. I'm on yeah, the little team that only plays for a dollar. Because you with your Kazimoto grip would have squeezed the holes right out of the ball with that claw grip you have. It's all right. Anyway. You know how many times I've changed my pitches and span in the last? No, probably never. Ten years. Once, Probably once, yeah, there once you go. when Mo refit when Mo, me. when Mo refit you, you. Yeah. yeah, you you change, you change your pitches and span more than you change no, your clothes. No, the last time I changed my pitches was um, last June. I changed yeah. my thumb pitch. I went from forward to reverse a little, a little. Yeah, I don't change much. 
when it comes to pitches, you want to try them all. Well, you told me to go drill a shorter span and pitch it forward, which I tried that because you told yeah, me cause, to. Because you're getting to that age where you need to have a little more relaxed span. Well, that's what happened. So I, I, I went to that. I relaxed the span a little bit, and I just yeah. adjusted the thumb pitch. There's nothing wrong with what I did. No. So should have done anyway, it. I did. Uh, what, somebody uh, asked me in the uh, chat if the uh, bowling balls I'm taking are the same ones from the videos that I do, and the answer is absolutely yes. I don't drill anything new. And when it comes to layouts – I typically don't put a ton of stock in the layouts, maybe pin up, maybe a pin <clears> down. <throat> but in the history of bowling, I've never in the history gone like of trick bowling. layouts. <laughs> I've never used trick layouts. I'd never yeah, try yeah. to be like, oh well, I'm I'm gonna go, you know, a little bit yeah, different see, with this or but I do that simply because people are gonna ask that question. Mm -hmm. I used to do that. I don't do that now. I don't do the no. testing anymore. But I used to do that. I used to have like my normal test ball. Uh, and at the time, it was like, you know, the pin was four and a half or something or whatever it was. And um, and then I would do another two or three balls with some trick layouts, you know, six inch pin, um, a yeah. pin way up, just because people would ask those questions. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. Um, essentially, I, you know, essentially all these all these balls are drilled essentially the same. You know, all the yeah. pin up layouts, all the urethanes mm -hmm. are drilled with four inch pins by 20. The symmetrical scorpion is four and a half by twenty, and then the ASIMs are sixty by five by twenty. So there's varying differences in ball strength there and how early they read. And you see it not in, oh, I gotta switch balls because I need something to go longer. I'm, I'm looking at cover strength. Like, so that's why you got the 360 at the very top. Right. That's what you're gonna start with and break up the lane. And then you're gonna work your way down. You know, so you have an order yeah. of where you're going to go when when that does what I think it's going to do. You know, it's going to be good for about six frames, seven frames. And when it starts to read a little earlier, hit flat. I know exactly what my next move is. I just have to wait for the markers to be able to see it. Once I see right. it, then I'll make the change. So and and it keeps progressing on. And once I see that one go away, then it's time to make another change. And yeah, it's time to get in a resin. It's time to get in a resin. So right. that's the bottom line. Yeah, you got a good mix there. I like that. You know, I'm just minus... glad. I'm just glad I'm I'm going to be bowling on a team with five people this year. Well, be... maybe they'll all show up. But two years ago, they abandoned you last year. So what are you telling me? Um, they had children. My 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 five my five ball layout is much more intelligently put together than that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and and the piece that I hadn't filled out yet is going to be the answer. Much but more um, intelligently, it is. It is. You know, yes, I got big, the intel, big, intel. Big brain lefty over here could find a way into the masters intel, and make the cut. With his... And the hitter pin down hitter, which I invented pin down, so I have to bring that ball. Sure, yeah. I mean, you invented that. We need to get you a jersey yeah. with that on there, huh? Oh, my God. I should have this on my back of my shirt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we no. should make business cards that you can sign for people because you might get stopped this year and be like, hey, I'm a big I fan know. of the show. What can I, you know, just you should. Who's keep that other shirt. guy? What's the other guy's name that's on the show with you? I get that a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Put yeah, some, yeah. yeah. Here's a shirt. Here, thanks for watching. Just carry a duffel bag or a little Walmart Shirts. bag with you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> what, um, <laughs> Phil is bringing out a mystery ball. Yeah, it is. I'm not telling anybody what it is. Uh, it will be approved by then. Yeah. Can, looks like, can, looks like everybody's maybe having issues with Facebook chat. I looked at it and it looked like the feed was working on Facebook. I didn't try chatting anything. I'm going to go ahead and see, I'm going to try something here and see. But like a lot of people are saying like the Facebook chats like messed up. You know, we don't control Facebook. So I'm sorry. Let's see here. Comments sent with 200 stars. Or more. Let's see. Test. I'm going to put my test there. Testing. One, two, three. <laughs> All right. Did you test? Let's see, let, let's see if it comes through on our end here. Because I, I am seeing Facebook comments come through. Yeah, it comes through just fine on our end. So I'm not sure what issues everybody's having. Uh, just hop over to YouTube if you're having issues um, and find the feed there. You can chat all you want. But no, I don't own the Facebook. Phil invented it. He has all the rights to the Facebook. Right. Um, yeah, he actually invented the Facebook, and then they changed it out from under him and then voted him out. So <laughs> Fabrizio. Yeah. You know Fabrizio. Fab, he writes... Did you get lightheaded with all those boards you had to move? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. I did. So, you know who I hadn't seen yet is Ian. Is he in? I didn't. I didn't see him. 
Post, he must be on. He must be watching. Watching the NCAA girls basketball finals, right? He must be glued to the set. He's he's trying to map out all the future WNBA stars based on the next draft. So I'm going to post the link one more time. You want to tell the rules again before we go into the yeah, the rules are very seven. simple. If, if you're a staff member uh -huh. and you put your name in here, we're going to come and get you. Uh oh, it's not good. Um. But if you're not a staff member, you put your name in the in the woo, what is it called? The woo box? Woo box. Woo box. And uh at the end of the show, Nick will pick a name randomly, allegedly randomly. I think he has 17 or 18 aliases. He's been winning his stuff all week, every week for himself. I am um, flush with his he's flush with grip sacks. sacks. <laughs> and um flush. that's why he did that's why when he won the shoes, he couldn't take them because people would notice them missing. And that's why he said spin again. That was usually well, really Nick as an alien. They would, they would see it on my videos and like, hey, there's that's the shoes. That's the shoes. Yeah, he that, said he didn't win. Anyway, he um, so anyhow, he puts the wool box up. You put your name in it. He picks a name out. At the end of the show, once he announces the name, I start the clock. You got 90 seconds to tell us that you are in the show. If you are, uh, when we spin the wheel, if you don't like the first prize, you can have another spin. And we added we added a T-shirt, which is a perception, perception versus, versus reality. reality. So hypothetically, a guy lands on T-shirt. What does he do? Yeah. Or like, hey, go, congratulations on winning your T-shirt. What would you like to do? Yeah. And then he says, well, I, I do need I'm another T-shirt. go with the T-shirt. No, no, spin again. And then he gets a grip sack. Yeah. So like, yeah, Nick joke's on you. Button. He has a little button that stops it on grip sack. <laughs> um, do we have any questions about this portion of the show? Do we have any questions? That is a great question, and I will have to scroll back and see. So, um, regarding anything like that, we got a lot of people commenting that they have bold and some of their experiences, which we yeah, can let's hear about go. that. Let's see what we got here. Um, uh, here we go. Uh, Paul, I was out there the first week of March. Team opened up very fast for me. I ended up 35, looking 6, 7, 8, and shot 501 for two. I will not talk about the first game. So good comeback once he kind of got in and hooked it. So it looks yeah, like in right. team, you can get in and right. hook it. Right. And right. that's kind of been the case a little bit. You know, you always start out like 6, 7, 8. Yeah. You know, you break them down. Like I played urethane for the past two years, I think, in, uh, in team. And just stayed out. Yeah. Like I stayed out of everybody's way, but eventually it right. goes away. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you didn't bowl so hot in team last year. I I, I bowled okay. I actually did. I bowled okay. I had like three 180 games or 160, 190, 180 or something like that. And you uh, swept brackets. I, I made money in brackets. I did. Right. I did. I did. Yep. Yeah. I bowled okay. And um, I didn't bowl good in, in doubles. We had that problem with the, the two young ladies that bowled with us, remember that? Do you, you don't recall that? I do recall that, yeah. She started on the wrong lane first. The other girl <laughs> may have never bowled the tournament in her life. Yeah. And then the next shot on the right lane, her thumb slug comes out. It's a, it's a rough start. That's a rough way to start. Yeah, I wasn't thrilled with that. That's I mean, all right. You know, what are you going to do? It happens, right? It's not, that, happens, not the end yeah. of the world. No, but I broke a, I broke a thumb. Later. Yeah, I understand that, but you know, it went down the lane um, and she didn't have an extra one. And it happens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Marcus asks, why no double cross, Nick? Well, no double cross, Nick. Because I'm not radical, Nick. That's why. And besides, <laughs> Phil makes fun of me so much that I just don't throw any radical there. How about that? No, no he doesn't. Uh, I actually don't really like your things that flare a lot. I try. I actually drilled two of these. And I drilled one to try to tone it down. Like I drilled it pinned down even to like narrow the flare even more. But mm -hmm. what did that ball have like 040 something diff on 040, right? No, um, I don't. No, it was 35, I think. Sure. I don't think it was much higher. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It it flared a lot more than my purple did. So yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it just tricks my eye. I have a certain way of seeing urethane go down the lane. And just like um, the pink widow, that ball flares around the whole ball. And I tried drilling that with like a six inch pin. <clears> right. And, to narrow the flare and it really didn't narrow the flare that much so um you know it, they just start up so much sooner because they're just over flaring and it wants you to force yourself in and that's never a good thing so you have to end up no, harder exactly. 
Yeah. It's throwing it harder or lofting it. So the ball can't hook in the air, but it can flare in the air. Allegedly. It's not alleged. It ball will I know flare. you talked to um, Robert Smith told you that. Um, I had trouble with the double cross there, too, for that reason. I was good for a couple of frames almost the whole game. And then I had to move in. I lost carry. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was um, – I'm trying to find the double cross. Of course, I'm not going to find it to see what the what the diff was. I don't know where it is. The internet's but, hard. It's on your website, but nah, the hell, I'm on the website. Nah, the hell with it. Uh... <laughs> oh, there it is. Double cross. Let's see what it has. Oh, 35. Okay. So, so yeah. And after drilling, who knows what it goes up to? I just know that when you drill a purple or that core in particular, because it's thick shell and the double cross is not, that the differentials don't – really do anything they don't really go up they or don't down blow or up. Nothing. right no like like robert yeah. we just posted a video with robert smith throwing the black hammer and you can see his track like his flare is like that so if yeah, robert smith can't right if robert smith can't get a hammer urethane ball to flare you know then yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no exactly. chance i'm getting it to flare. no you're not gonna get, have that problem I can get a 16 pounder to flare like maybe three inches total. So like this much versus like what I get normally. Right. So that's a small difference. Um, yeah. Chemistry question for you. All Rob right. Johnson, can you use resin additives and plastic? Can we see a spy with more traction? No. The only way you can do that is with uh, particles. Particulates. 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 Yeah. The additives that you put in a resin ball, we can't put in a polyester ball. Thomas says, with the way urethane impacts lanes, why is it still preferred over something like the new hammer? What would it, it eventually take to phase out urethane? It seemed like it was happening in the 90s and 2000s. Well, I mean, the, the resin boom, you know, kind of made, and the, and the way they oiled the lanes back then, right. a lot less, lot less oil, a lot more <laughs> friction, a lot of older surfaces. Um, you know, resin was king. But they did come out with particle bowling balls in the 90s late 90s mid to late somewhere 96 97 yep yep they did they did so Put everything that in mimic there. that mimicked more of an early tractioning urethane yeah. ball well at the time they were still flooding the lanes with oil trying to um, prevent the balls from hooking as much that they did so we just fixed it by putting glass in the cover stock bro right we actually use glass beads made by 3m at columbia yeah, yeah. so yeah, you just, it was a combat there, you know. So now the lanes, yeah. you know, the patterns have gotten a lot more advanced with the machines being able to put out all these crazy sport type patterns. Mm -hmm. And so it's evolved to say, hey, urethane bowling balls actually control these patterns. They take a lot of it out of play. Um, and if you can get good with using urethane and tricking your eye to see it different, because it rolls different than a urethane or than a resin right. ball. Right. Um, it's more conducive to scoring because you're not going to give away the pocket as much. You know, yep. your, your bad hits are going to be like a flat 10 or a four pin or something like that, or you don't get the, the Wally hit and you go on to the next pair and do the same thing. You stay put. So, yeah. um, why isn't the new ha blue hammer being used more on tour? I mean, the pros are going to use what they think that they have the best opportunity to strike and score high. I just think they haven't given it a big enough chance on mm -hmm. tour because of the um, the stigma of urethane. Yeah. Um, the fact that it's not urethane, it's got a little bit of a, an additive in it, different additives. Um, but when we tested it, it mimicked the purple hammer. Yeah, it was close, just a little bit longer. You know? A little bit longer, so it... maybe a little bit more pop down lane. So as far, maybe a little bit more pop down lane. But I think that they haven't, uh, they, they've said, well, we're going to throw the um, the black. And, and you got to remember one thing, they have a lot, for the most part, Nearly all have a higher rev rate yeah, than four to five hundred plus. Yeah, so they're going to be able to use a, a black uh, hammer, the new one, and move right a little more than they would maybe with the new. But the new is uh is is it's a purple hammer in disguise is what that really is. Yeah, you know. I'm going to post the link one more time before we get to the next question. Yeah, and you so guys you know the rules. Minutes, you know the ten rules. Ten minutes left. Yep. And then we're going to uh, do the um, top five. Top seven plus two. Uh, we'll take one more question. And uh, somebody yeah. asked you, How many Scotch Bright pads are you bringing in there, Phil? You know, it's it's illegal. Scotch Bright padding the ball once the tournament thoughts is illegal, but you can still bring them and use them in practice. So, how many are you going to bring? Still use them. I'm, I'm going to end up breaking out a new one. 
Hmm. Can you do that? You can't stay on the lanes and practice there. Yeah, you can. Sure, you can. Absolutely. I you can. Have to touch the balls once you left the paddock. Not a, not true at all. All right. Well, what do I know? I don't know because I've never done that. I don't do that. <laughs> you wait till. <laughs> uh, I got did. it. I told you what happened the other night, right? With league, I drilled the spy and I was showing the spy and it really wasn't cutting it. And I only brought in a couple of balls. I brought in a spy and two intels. And um, <laughs> I'm going to change. I said to my teammates, I'm going to change the balls. <laughs> I'm going to change the balls. You, you only have three balls. I, I'm going to change balls. I'm going to change the balls. <laughs> and out came the towel. <laughs> and I funny. changed the balls. They became different balls. Nice. All right. We ready for yeah. this top? Top five plus two. <laughs> I had more Mark, fun. I had more fun doing this. Go ahead. And since you know Phil actually is an overachiever, he felt so bad for not doing any of these top fives. He finally <laughs> came up with his own. And he's like, you know what? No top five, top seven. Top seven. He's Only, like, this is like uh, the so Amish way, though. like in Kingpin. Like we do everything exactly. you do plus a half. It's half. it was I couldn't choose. It was so much fun. Uh, and, and I, one year we did brackets and Ron Bragg was part of the, the, we did brackets based on strength of mascot, right? You know, guy <laughs> with gun beats guy with sword, uh, <laughs> yeah, like a tiger or oh, cat, uh, be, uh, tiger beats cat, hawk, you know, hawk beats sparrow. Be mice. yeah, exactly. And we went down the whole thing and we ended up finishing higher than a lot of people that picked teams. Think about that. <laughs> you just picked. The I'm mascot, mascot, you know. So this so is a good. facetious title chosen. Oh, yeah. Still, fear. <laughs> did you freeze again? Oh my god, I cannot believe this guy. It's got one job to do, and I can't even change the screen. So I guess we're stuck. I'll look at some questions. While we're here, I lost. Well, I lost you for a sec. I'm back. Are you ready? Let's get through this. <laughs> Are you ready? Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. This so is your Co coastal Carolina chanteliers. So I had to go look it up. Um, it's a rooster. So so, and and, and I want this to play th play tr through for the rest of these, the next six. When you're sitting in the boardroom at the college and you are going to pick the mascot for that college to represent your team on the sport, the sports fields across the country, somebody brought this up and they said, yes, let's go with that. That's good. That's good. I think Sign that'll scare everybody we play. <laughs> Will be the fighting. They're not even the fighting chanteliers. They're chanteliers. It's a rooster, a blue rooster. Hmm. The second ah, C is next. silent. It is. <laughs> Everyone's yelling at me right now. I had one job. <laughs> one job. See, you had one job. It's caught on. I have to get. I have to make another. T-shirt. A T-shirt. You had one job. <laughs> Nick, you had one job. You had one job. You had one job. Man. All right. All right. Number six. Here's another view. The Fighting Blue Hens. Now, that's a Delaware team. And I and I know the reason it's that way. See, in that part of Delaware, it's a lot of chicken farms. Hmm. Um, it's just inherent to the area. And I can understand the hen being a big deal. Again, the Fighting Blue Hens. That's I mean, your at, least, mascot. at least they're fighting now. Look at the guy. You Would, would that scare you? If I saw like that, I would be terrified. Yeah. Which one? The guy in the field? N no, the image, no, not the, the image. Uh, yeah, not the guy. Look at the guy. Yeah, that's a fighting blue hen. Hey. I'm <sighs> telling you. I'm telling you, right? All right, number say number five. They were just in the, and they were just in the tournament. The peacocks. Where how is that a big deal? How on earth can you pick a peacock? They're mild mannered. All they do is it's like the mass the mascot itself looks very surprised that one of their players can actually dunk. Exactly what it looks like, right? I'm telling <laughs> you. 
again, I, I take you back to the boardroom. What are our choices? Well, we have the Tigers. We have a Lion. We have a, um, <laughs> a, a, a an English Mastiff. My dog has better chance. Oh, no, no, no. What do you think, Sid? I'm going to go with the Peacock. All in yeah. favor? I... Okay, next topic. Oh, my yep. God. Number four, my favorite. This is my absolute favorite. I'm going to tell you why. The Manhattan Jaspers. And everybody goes, what, what's a Jasper? No, it's not what's a Jasper. It's who's the Jasper. The guy on the left is Brother Jasper. That's the name, Brother? His brother. Yeah, he's a brother. It, it, the brothers were teachers. It's a religious oh, okay. deal. Manhattan's a religious school. Okay, so Brother Jasper was the dean of discipline at Manhattan College. But he was also the coach of the baseball team. So every year in the middle of the summer, um, the baseball team would play an exhibition game against a, a, um, a semi-pro team. It was in like August, right before school started. A uh, hot, humid day in Manhattan area. And the crowd was just lackadaisical. They did nothing. They were sitting there. It was quiet. Nothing going on. And he comes out of the dugout in the seventh inning and got everybody up to stretch. Mm. Brother Jasper invented the seventh inning stretch. Not I thought I invented it. Not me. He invented the seventh inning stretch. And, and as, as a matter of fact, they played an exhibition game against the New York Giants. And he did it there, and then it caught on. That's how the seventh inning stretch came to be. Little tidbit from your uncle Phil. But now, what, what year was at, that? And when did the no, uh, I don't know the, the song? When did the song the song start for the seventh inning stretch? The, well, the traditional song. song. Had nothing to do with this. It was Harry Carey. I don't know if he started it, but I, I, I didn't look that up. Harry. But yeah. of all the mascots you saw so far, look at the guy on the left. I'd be afraid of him. <laughs> Oops. Phil invented the seventh frame stretch. That's right. Every seventh frame, I have the team stretch. The <laughs> other night, I took a knee in league because the seven pin offended me. He took a knee. Next. <laughs> number four. Number three. Uh, here we go. Another one, right? The fighting squirrels. Once again, if I saw a squirrel coming at me with boxing gloves, I would get out of his way. So the squirrel on the right would scare you. Were you not loved as a child? How do I know that's the actual mascot? I think you just that's picked a picture that off of the mascot. I went to the I went to the college website. You don't I even know logo don't know to... and images. That's what I looked for. Logo and images. I got all of this information. How did you get to the website? You, I didn't know you you, you learned I, I how went, to use I the went, internet. I went to the website and I had a list of all college mascots in the United States. Scrolled through them, picked out some of the better ones, and then went to the college for the image. And the logo. And there it is. The fighting squirrels. I'm gonna oh, make no. Them. Here they come. The fighting squirrels. I hope Shiv we can survive this game. I'm shivering. I'm shivering. Yeah, but what if they have like an eight-foot tall basketball player that's just like wow, from like Croatia or something? Where like, yeah, right. They walk right. in like, oh, man. Oh, man. No, not not so funny man. now. No, not so funny. <laughs> now, number two. My favorite. Oh, my God. I have no words. I have no words. How how do you come out of that room with a mascot for the school and you pick the pickles, the fighting pickles? And so that's who would, how they dress at the game. Who who would would win in a fight though between the fighting pickles and the fighting hens? Oh, the hens would win. They would peck the pickle. But look what he's armed. Yeah, but uh, look at look at he's got a skirt on. He's got what a tutu. I don't. know. That's a tutu. It looks purple like yeah. Hair, the purple hair. <sighs> the school of Arts, flying pickles, fighting pickles. I think, I think it's uh, hilarious. By the way, you know, I there's a sandwich chain out west called Mister Pickles. Is one of yeah. the best sandwiches chains there is. Right. And uh, their their mascot is very similar. They actually have one of their employees <laughs> dress up like the one on the left and like go on yeah. the street corner and like try right. to. Flag hawk people pickles. down. Yeah, hawk the sandwiches. Yeah. Yeah. All right, number one, ready? Number one, my favorite one, my cousin Vinny's favorite team, the Utah Utes. <laughs> What's a Ute? <laughs> the, the what? The Utah what? What? The Utes. 
Oh, the Utes. The Utes. My cousin Vinny's favorite team, the Utah Utes. Nice. And that's our top five. Seven. Plus two for today. Hope you enjoyed them. I did. I had a good time. I'm glad. I'm glad you actually finally did a top five. I did a lot for this show today, by the way. See, next week when I ask him what the top five is going to be, he's like, what? I did I did one and a half. I did 1.4. I only have, I only have to give you three next week. Yeah, he's, that's exactly what you're going to say. What? I gave you 1.4 last week. I only have to give you 0. 0.6. Let's give you three. I would be absolutely floored if you gave me three out of every top five that we did every week. I would be like, man. I, I will tell everybody one thing, though. You got I wouldn't put it up, but you got to do this for me, please. Go look up the Rhode Island School of Design. I'm not going to put that up. No, no, I don't want you to. <laughs> if uh, I mean, after the show is over, why don't you hop on over to Google and search? Yeah. What was it? The Rhode Island what? Rhode Island School of Design. Rhode Island School of Design. What tell a great me method. how that's not how that happened. I mean, it depends what they're designing, right? Rhode Island School of Design. I'm going to just tell you the mascot's name. And then you guys can go do the rest. Mm -hmm. The mascot's, this mascot's name is Scrody. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. All right. We haven't talked about ball maintenance at all this show. Do you know that? I know we have never talked about ball maintenance, have we? I don't. I don't think we have. Not in a grand scheme or no, having. We a did on most Mondays on on radical rundowns. We did, mm -hmm. but um, you know. Yeah, but we haven't talked about it, and I think it kind of goes by the wayside. We've made videos about it. Yep, we have. And what I think happens is there. I mean, one, they're not our our most popular video content. I think people are much more interested in new bowling balls. Because yep. that's the ultimate fix. You know, hey, this ball doesn't hook yeah, as much yeah, anymore. Yeah. I don't want right. to go get the stuff taken <clears throat> care of. I don't want to get the oil right. out and change my grips and yeah. resurface. No, I just ching, swipe, new, new ball. ball. New ball. Which is great. Right. It's fine. We appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're serious about, you know, hey, I want to keep this ball around. I want to get the most performance out of it for many years, not just for, I don't know, 60 games. Yeah, there's no such thing as ball death if you main if you if you know how to maintain a ball and bring it back to factory finish or life. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Some of the comments are saying Scrody, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're they're you. starting to Google. Um, they're already googling, aren't they? You know when I when I had my pro shops and that was a big part of my pro shop was the maintenance aspect. I had all my machinery out on the main floor. So I had my Haas resurfacer and I had my reviver oven right out there on the sales floor so that people can see one, that it's, you know, working. And two, they ask right. questions like, Hey, what does this do? What does that do? What is that ball doing in there? Right. And I say, well, you know, after X amount of games, you know, bowling balls, they have their performance based on how much oil they absorb mm -hmm. and how much surface they can create contact with the lane. Over time, bowling balls absorb so much oil that they become like a sponge where they can't absorb any more oil. And the surfaces, you know, they kind of find a medium. And, and they, they migrate they, towards the surface you're bowling on. Right. So right. it's important to adjust that. And where people have the biggest eye-opening experience is it's not like one day you show up to bowling and then all of a sudden your ball doesn't hook. It happens gradually. Just kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, you start boiling water. It doesn't just boil as soon as you turn the heat on. Yeah, but you won't notice it sometimes because it's so gradual. It's so gradual, you right. won't notice. And then you call me and say they changed the shot at my bowling center. Yeah, they changed the shot. Nothing hooks yeah, there. My ball's, not, my ball's not hooking. I said, you clean, check the ball. No. My ball died. My ball died. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I used to put people on a little bit of a program, and I'd say, hey, all right, well, you have, and there's different programs for different bowling balls because not every ball needs the same amount of attention as others. So, like, you classify them into, like, dull and shiny. So, shinier balls are going to require a little less maintenance as far as surface goes, and they usually typically absorb a little bit less oil than a dull solid would. Right. So, you know, people don't realize that 
the, the surface on a dull ball, say if it's finished at 500, 1500, will only take about three, four, five games to double as far as its surface. It could be out of the box at like 1200 scan. Right. And then you bowl five games and all of a sudden it's at 3000. Yeah. So. But touching but, up. I'm sorry, but real quick, but one of the things you have to realize <clears throat> the ball you started with the, you know, it, it, it mellowed out to some point, then it leveled off and you liked it for a long time at that leveled off spot. Mm -hmm. Then you go back and start over, and then you don't like it again because you rem remembered it yeah. a month before when you liked the way when it was leveled off. So, th so there's all stages, like Nick was saying. There's stages that the ball goes through. It's not always just cut and dry that I, I have a ball with 2,000, I'm going to hit it with 2,000 and bring it back. That's not it. Not it because you gotta under start that 2,000 might have been 500. Yeah. And it usually you know, is. That's almost it always is. the starting right. grit for right, right. Five to do a resurface. So yeah, Go ahead, like, Sorry. when people back in the day when the lanes like tore up and tracked bowling balls like crazy, that's not really the case anymore. You know, a resurface was like a big thing. Like, oh, I got to get my ball resurfaced. But now it only takes a few minutes on a Haas machine to get it back to factory surface. Right. It's on a 500 pad, maybe a minute to two minutes tops. And then a finishing pad, say if it's only 500, 1500, about half the time. I always go about half the time for the second round to finish it off. Um, but oil extraction, you know, I used to propose to people like every 60 games. And that's when you want to get the oil extracted. And if you're really into performance, do it more often. But the duller the ball, the more oil is going to absorb typically. Um, and they'd be amazed at how many, how much oil comes out of a ball just after 60 games that's just sitting in the ball. So, um, and the last part of it, which I always suggested when people brought in their ball to get resurfaced or get this oil put out and often goes overlooked is changing your finger inserts and cleaning out your thumb. If you have old tape, getting the fit back to what you remember brand new, because I've seen bowling balls come into the shop like old zones and stuff like that, where they had grips that had kind of crystallized and hardened and shrunk. And they were probably the original grips that came in the ball. And this ball's like <laughs> 15, 20 years old and has probably, I don't know, no, 15, but they still 20 fit. years. No, they fit fine. Don't even bother. Right. It's like, stop, right. just stop it right stop. now. Exactly. <laughs> I put, I put one of those bowling balls in the reviver and it sweat for two and a half days, full shifts. Like, it's amazing, amazing, isn't it? Right, right, right. It's like right, it right. would just not stop coming out. And then finally on the last day, it finally dried up and got all yeah. the oil out. Right. And it's like, oh, my gosh. And now when he yeah. throws it, it's like, whoa. Yeah, or he says the ball, the ball doesn't hook now because it's burning up. It's, right. it's hooking in the wrong spot. Move your you know, feet. Move your feet. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, there was a question in the chat about revivers and all that, and we absolutely recommend them. But. 130 degrees is the top of the tier of where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And it's not saying go home and put it in your home oven at 130 degrees. Do no. not do that. No. Do not Betty, do that. Betty Crocker does not recommend that. <laughs> do not do not put that in there. Somebody else put in there a while ago. Um, can I put my ball in a dishwasher? Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you really want petroleum based products in your dishwasher? Yeah. Do you? It's stuff that's been picking up on the lanes, the dirt, the grime, the schmutz that's all over the place. Yeah. You know, you don't want to do that. I, um, I have I had an old friend in juniors that used to do that. He used to swear by the dishwasher until he pressed the wrong button one time. Uh, and, and he went on the heat cycle that was too hot or something like that. Yeah, and it, yeah, yeah. his ball melted into the wire rack and gouged half the ball off. And then his beautiful. mother came home and she got really pissed oh, off about the pissed. dishwasher being ruined. Ruined. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling ruined. you, do not do that. Ruined. Um, if you want, just buy ball cleaner. As a matter of fact. Hey, look at that. Clear Magic. It's a uh, plant based <laughs> ball cleaner. Uh, and this works really good. It cleans the balls. If you do this after you bowl, if you want to do it every time, you can. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's fine. It takes, it takes the, the, the junk that's on the surface out. Yeah. Um, if the ball has gotten too many games on it, go to the pro shop, let them put it in the, uh, whatever. Reviver, they, yeah. 
Was that I know. I think Innovative yeah. actually makes a new um, Reviver oven. It's a smaller one than the than the yeah. Pro Shop version. Yeah. That it's regulated and it's made for bowling balls. So stuff like that. I mean, yeah. obviously, it's yeah. expensive to if you're not a Pro well, Shop, you know, to do your own stuff. You know, you got to be really into it to want right. to to pony up and buy it. But get something that's made actually for bowling balls that can circulate yeah. the air and keep it at a low temperature. You don't need a ton of heat to get oil out of a no, bowling ball. No, no, no. Uh, uh, you don't, and and be careful, you know, if you're thinking about home remedies, because yeah, it's just amazing. I saw a picture on the internet the other day about the guy the hammer that looked like it blew up, yeah, split in half. Know, they put it in their oven for how long and at what temperature to make it do that, yeah, you know, and and not all ovens are, by the way, what the temperature says on the dial inside the oven. So no. do not do not do that. Um, as far as getting the ball back to surface, you know, we mentioned it a little earlier. You got to have that base under it. Yeah. Um, you know, if your ball was 3,000 and you love the way it performed, it's not performing, you just can't hit it with 3,000 because now you have 3,000 modified under 3,000. Mm -hmm. You might have 4,000 on the ball if it yeah, wore it's out. The, it's not the same. Not the same. So you got to go back, hit 500, go through the steps. You know, um, you know, people are saying, well, you can never get a ball back to factory. I don't agree. I disagree. Uh, you can. The reason you don't recognize it is because it's been months since you had it back to factory and you're probably <laughs> not seeing it. Um, you know, you can't remember how that ball was the exact day you got it when you threw it. So, you know, just go back, look at the list. We put on there what the steps are, but the, the, but the first step is the most important. You got to get that back to that heavier grit and then work it up from there. Absolutely. Yeah. The, you got to follow the steps if you're going to do it. And there's some people yeah. that have spinners. They invested in ball spinners and pads absolutely. and that's yeah. absolutely great. Right. So you have all the stuff you have to go in order. So if you want to get it back to box surface yeah. and say the ending grit, like you said, is like 2000, you can't just put 2000 on top and call it good. Right. That's not the same. So you got to start over. You got to go 500. You got to go 2000 on top. That's how you get it. Yeah. Somebody asked about the best method for oil extraction at home. Yeah, um, at home, hot, you know, hot bucket of water and some soap, some Dawn would be the only thing I'd recommend. Yeah, yeah. And just try uh, to tap, keep the fingers out of the water. Yeah, tap <laughs> tap, tap, water. I mean, it'll yeah. get to about that, 120, 130 maybe tops. And just put it uh, in there for a little while. You'll see it float on the top, the oil. Yeah, come out. yeah. So, I mean, the best thing is to take it to your pro shop. You know, they're going right, to get it the best, right. and they get the machinery yeah. to do it properly. Yeah. Or buy a ball cleaner. <laughs> that works. No, it well, does. It works. Yeah, with and yeah. I was gonna say like when you get into like urethane bowling balls, like I don't usually touch my stuff unless I'm going to a tournament or whatever. But there's no oil to extract. There's oil in the shell. So in the peaks and valleys, the oil likes to stay in there, and that's where you get the durometer right. readings. Any kind of junk that gets in there. Yeah. So it, everybody knows it's every throwing a, a, a urethane ball hooks like crazy the first couple shots. You get a little bit of oil in there. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, it hooks less. So right. how does that work? Oil on the shell makes the ball perform less. So it right, got exactly. soft. It's going to measure softer after three shots, but but it's not. Any, anyway, <laughs> we're getting we're getting to another topic. Yeah. Uh, a but little urethane bit of surface, balls you can clear right. You can clean them too right away you, with cleaner. You can use that cleaner that you just had in this conjunction one. with a pad. Exactly. So if you like your if you like your urethane ball, say like black hammer, it's uh, the simple. It's five hundred grit. That's that's the process. So use a use a 500 pad, get it nice and and wet. Use the cleaner in conjunction, clean it all off, try it all off, and guess what? You're back in business, exactly. baby. Back in factory. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here's the other thing: if you don't like it at 500 grit, so your ball speed's not enough. Okay, yeah. try it at a thousand. Right. It's like you have to do the box surface, but if you find something you like and it's repeatable, say you like 500. 2000 4000 instead of 500 2000 because you throw it a little slower like you for instance like me. then i put 5000 uh, on you my can, intel you can repeat that right no when you retouch it up you're not going to just hit it with 5000 you're going to no go back. no no i'll go back to what it was before which is 1500 2000 5000 yeah that's what was on it before because i did it before it was my own that's what i had on it <laughs> no i mean you know i invented that Someone um, says, uh, what, what about sticking a ball in a bucket of rice? I don't know if that works. I should, <laughs> I don't know. You know what? I'll tell you what. We tried to sell that years ago. We had, I forget what it's called. 
uh, Columbia had. It was a plastic mold. It looked like looked like a bowling yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah, the, the hook again treatment. It was like yeah, a kitty litter. It was, it was kitty litter. That's what it was. It was a kitty litter base product. It was like and, it was like dirt basically. And yeah, well, it's it's diatomaceous earth, by the way. If you want to know okay. the name, write that down. If you could spell that for me right now. So let me tell you a story, by the way. <laughs> See, this is how he gets out of having to do something. Is he, I let was me at, tell you a story. I was at a baseball game one time. This is subterfuge. This is when I had Dynathane. Okay. I was at a baseball game um, with Bill Crispin. Nice. And we were sitting there talking, and it started to rain. So we moved back, you know, under the cover, and we're sitting there talking. And, and I watched the guys come out, and they called it Diamond Dust. That's what they call it for the baseball field. But it's diatomaceous earth. I looked it up. Right? What is diamond dust? Diatomaceous earth. And I said, look how fast that absorbed the water. Mm -hmm. Can I put that in a bowling ball? And I did. I <laughs> Whoa. Did. I did. I did. Okay. Okay. Did. And it absorbed oil so fast, it was rapid fire. It was unbelievable. Yeah. I don't remember which ball it was. It was one of my first Dynatane balls. <laughs> And a matter of fact, at the trade shows, I would put a drop of oil on it while I was talking to the guy. And while before I even got, shook his hand, the oil would be gone. Mm -hmm. It was that fast. But that's an additive that we could we use. Now the problem was <clears throat> the uh diatomaceous earth was very abrasive. How do you spell that? Diatomaceous, D-I-A tomaceous. <laughs> and um <laughs> and it was very abrasive. And what happened is it it the impellers, it ruined them. Oh. The boring, so we couldn't do them anymore wow it, 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 it re reduced the life cycle of it so i mean we didn't know you know hmm. uh don so. says in spite of what a pro shop might tell its clients the majority of bowlers are lazy and absolutely clueless when it comes to ball maintenance they are I mean, we try to educate you know we try to they are with stuff like this and different videos yeah. mo mondays radical rundowns all that stuff we try to put right. out there mm -hmm. you know to maintain your stuff i mean the best thing you can do is Go to your pro shop and just say, hey, this is what I'm seeing. What do you yeah. recommend? Find a pro shop that has both a hawser surfacer or any kind of nice resurfacer machine right? and um, a reviver type oven that's made for bowling balls that will extract the oil because you're going to have to do both and yeah. you're going to have to change your grips. Don forgot to add the part that they're too cheap mm -hmm. to go in there and have the guy resurface the ball. That's why they try to do it themselves. They buy a pad and they sit at the table before league and they like that. Meanwhile, the guy's got a ball spinner. He could do it professionally done. So it's even all around and smooth. And the same thing with cleaning the balls. And they sit there and they buy the cleaners, they spray the balls, and that's good. But you know what? Eventually you're gonna have to do a deep clean. Yeah. If you want to keep the ball. Or you know what? Buy another ball. I mean that's, that's usually what people do. I'm gonna buy a year, I'm gonna buy a ball every year. That's it. And, and that's, that's it. it. And I'm going to put right. this one in my arsenal and then that's it. And then they uh, call me in a year and say it cracked sitting on the floor in my basement and it only had 30 games on it. I must right. get a thousand emails like that a year. Yeah. If it only had 30 games on it. Why are you worried about it cracking? And why are you emailing me three years later? If you exactly. haven't touched it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Ace, does urethane require baking? I understand resurfacing. No, because if, if you've ever thrown urethane, and so you put your bowling ball away with oil on it and you come back the next week, guess what's on your ball? Oil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so the oil <laughs> is petroleum. It's not going to dissipate into the air like, I don't know, say a solvent, which are two completely different things. Right, Phil? Exactly. Solvent and, and oil are two different things. So it does stay in the shell in the peaks and valleys. So that's where it just finds a home. And it squats and it just uh, yeah. doesn't pay rent. It just stays there. And it waits um, for the durometer to come so he can jump up and grab it. And it says, I'm soft. Yeah. I'm softer. Me. Stab me. Yep. I'm reading okay. 62. Oh, that's Give science, me. folks. I need more people. Come over here. Now we're reading 61. There's more of us in this hall, in this, in this crevice. Here, grab me that ramp. <laughs> Don't start with the ramp. <laughs> uh, anyway. but if you were to put a, a urethane ball in a reviver oven, um, the chances of something coming out are, um, let me preface this, a true urethane ball, purple hammer, black hammer. Certain bowling balls out there, something like new blue hammer is not urethane. It does absorb oil at a rate that is so slow 
that it's legal legal so there are other bowling balls out there that are urethane yeah. but they're really urethane like so uh, what a bad marketing tool that was for them this mm. ball's urethane now it's banned wait 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 <laughs> it's really not all urethane not I, just I kidding i'm just kidding <laughs> psych <sighs> april fools april fools i was joking <laughs> so yeah i mean a lot of good conversation we can go on for yep. a I long know. time but it's, it's time about for that a winner it's, it's time for that, a winner it's about that time yeah i have chosen a winner I haven't put the up on the screen yet, though. So, what's uh, what's new with you? What's uh, what are you looking forward? Who's starting for the Yankees? How about that? Who who well, are you most excited? Nesta for? Cortez is going to start, but Stroman I thought would be the starter and Rodon, but neither one wanted. I can't understand that Stroman did not want to be the starter of opening day because he's soft. Well, maybe that's it. You know, he's a he's a fair weather player. If things go bad, he's going to be the worst yeah, cancer well, on the team. He's in the worst state, worst city possible for that. Well, that's the whole thing. It's just going to add to it now, isn't it? Yeah, that's probably right. I um, just, I mean, well, Don had thing... a great spring. He threw the ball really good this spring. He had good control. I like Nestor. He's entertaining. Um, I'll enjoy that game. You know. Hmm. But uh, yeah. it's Thursday, opening day. Not for the Dodgers. They already opened. We already had opening I, day. I heard they have an FBI day. <laughs> they get free tickets now. The for FBI life. players get free tickets for life. Bought, paid to, paid for by Otani. Perfect. He's FBI. very generous. He is a generous way. person. He gave his bookie five four point five million is to his bookie. He gave him. It was a tax deductible donation. What can I say? It's at the bookies of America. B of A. All right. Go ahead. Spin it. Who's the winner? I'm going to tell you. It's probably one of your aliases this time. No, it's probably you. Because the winner's pick. name is Phil. I haven't said the last name yet. but All right. Phil. Phil. Winner this week, Phil Das Cole. You have 90 the seconds. Scully. Are you even to even time right now? You're not even getting your watch it's out, the, are you? It's the Scully. The Scully is how you say it. If you're I in the chat, I'm... Phil the Scully. Let us know because if, if I here, said it right, if I said it right, say yes too. We'll make sure I get it here, right. You get to have two spin opportunities. Right now, if you're not here. How much time seconds, you got? 80, 80 seconds. seconds. Yeah. Dun dun. Come on, Phil. Come Phil. on, Phil. Don't let us no. down. It's not like a not like a Phil to not show up to the podcast, right? Exactly. Now you got uh let's see, 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> running out of time yeah so maybe i said his name oh wrong. he's oh, here what's his did i say his name right how do we i don't know he's got to tell us how he says it <laughs> well just say yes or no you think, it, you think it's Descoli? that's what i say it is is it like fragile the hell is fragile yeah that's you wouldn't know <laughs> he's here so this is the how it's gonna work lamp. the fragile this lamp is how, this is how it's gonna work we're gonna spin the wheel it's going to land right. on something. You're going to have an opportunity to say spin again. Spin or, or no spin. Spin again or not spin. So spin if it lands on shirt, I'm going to laugh because we're going to see what the first person who lands on shirt. You should have made the shirt like three times wider. <laughs> then we'll... Just make just make it like three quarters exactly. of the board. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's funny. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ready? Here right. it comes. Come on, free ball arsenal. I want this to be very, very, very expensive for Phil. Come on, on free ball. Come here, on, comes, here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, it's on Shammy. Shammy. So, or, Phil, or. you have a choice now. Do you want to spin again or do you want to keep the Shammy? Oh, you're talking to the other Phil, the guy that won, not me. Okay, I got it. Not, I, I only talk to you when I have to. I'm talking oh, yeah. to the, the cool Phil right now. All right, the cool Phil. I wonder how you say his last name. If we were he right. said yes earlier, but he said it was the right way. I pronounced it the right way, right? He says spin again. I can't believe you're not keeping a chamois. How could you not keep the chamois? <laughs> oh man, the last guy that did that won a pair of shoes. No oh way. man, oh, all right, man. he's spinning again. So we're gonna right, spin it Phil. one more time. Ready? Here we Big go. This time, Big ball. Big ball. Big ball. Here's my hands. Come on, I get, I get accused in the chat always. I get chat Peter. like everybody. Come on, three ball arsenal. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's a shirt. <laughs> yes. The first nice. week out, he wins a shirt. All right. Perfect. Perception get in. versus reality t shirt. Hey, the first awesome. on your block. The first on be your block to have one. First. So I'm going to reach out to you. 
and we're going to get that shirt on order. They're all made to order. It usually takes oh. about a week, roughly, to get to your door, and that's about yeah. the thing. So, hey, first week, first shirt. How about that? So next week, if you're wearing the shirt and we pick your name. <laughs> he we'll, says spin again. <laughs> we'll give you the ball. <laughs> doesn't work like that. <laughs> no. Next week, if you're wearing the shirt and we pick your name. Uh, matter of fact, if you guys buy the shirt and we pick your name and you're wearing the shirt, we'll give you another spin. How are we ever going to prove that they're wearing a shirt? That's why I, you ruined my joke, Nick. Uh, well, jokes by definition no, are funny. No I know funny. All right. Anyway. Shirt, shirt, um, hap someone says shirt happens. Shirt happens. <laughs> uh, it's a nice guys, shirt. You got some info out of the show today about the. Um, uh, oh, I got one more thing to ask. If anybody has a 14 pound Intel solid, mm. get in contact, uh, get in contact with me and I will trade you. And I'm sure it'll be an up trade uh, from what you have. So, so, so if you're sitting on a 14 pound Intel solid, is that all you want? Yeah, solid? solid. Pearls? I, got, yeah, I have the pearl. You have the pearl already. You have plenty of yeah, pearls I got, left. I got, and I also have the SE, which was pretty close. Okay, so Intel you know. Solid 14 yeah. Phil's on the lookout for. If you know yeah. of any, or if you yeah, have let me one, know. Yep. reach out, yep. Yeah, and um, we'll play Let's Make a Deal. There'll be another spin on the wheel. We'll give you an extra <laughs> spin, too. We'll, we'll trade you for either a ball of your choice or a spin well, on the wheel. The wheel. <laughs> a multiple spin. Yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, I hope you got some good information from the, um, the, the part about the Nationals. Remember, we have free information. Always free. Always free. We and don't... always, well, entertaining for us. I don't know if you guys are entertained by it, but Nick and I always have a good time doing it. Um, we love having you guys come in on Tuesday, Wednesday rather, not Tuesday, Wednesday, at the With number 10 ranked bowling podcast, podcast in the Wednesday, world on Wednesdays at 3. Two, at 2 o'clock Central. That's it. <laughs> All right. I don't know who does the ratings, but um, I don't. I don't know. It's Mr. Rating Guy. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's him. He must be in <laughs> someone's pocket because there's just no way we're getting sandbagged. <laughs> All right, I'm out of hey, here. Wait, someone has a good question, real quick. <laughs> Couldn't you just make more solid intels? <laughs> don't you have a factory? <laughs> He's got you there. I never thought of that. Why don't I just make more? I don't oh. need them. Never mind. No, I can't. I can't just make a case of balls. I don't need 500 of them. Someone looks like they posted a eBay link. So maybe there's one on eBay right now for you. Maybe you can pay uh, top dollar. Go I'm not going to pay top dollar, but I will pay. Gladly pay you on Tuesday for a hamburger today. For for an Intel solid today. today. That's right. All right, All right everybody. Get out of here. Phil. Nick. Nice talking with you. Same Other here. Phil. Congratulations. Other Phil. Dicasoli. I'll reach you out to you and get your shirt size and shipping info. Get that order in. All right. We'll see you guys. See you next Adios. week. Adios. Bye. Out.